Thank you again for everyone's attention today. So just a quick reminder, um, I'm Zeb Wasatsky, and um, today I'm gonna be walking us through a short overview of what Benchling can do for your lab um, using an antibody production experience, uh, example, excuse me. Um, before jumping over to the product though, you know, as uh, some of you may be familiar, uh, antibody production is generally spread over multiple teams. And um, today we'll be focusing on a couple different uh, personas. So we'll have the bench scientist, uh, a director of R&D, and then um, your IT manager as, you know, um, we've talked so much about how to set up uh, Benchly. And although each individual has um, unique needs, uh, you know, they're all working as a team to produce, uh, you know, a therapeutic antibody. Switch over to my screen, here we go. So, for those of you who have yet to use Benchling, um, again, just as a reminder, we are cloud-based. So I'm, I'm in my browser here in a demonstration environment. And on the left-hand side, you can see all of the different um, application layers, as Lauren mentioned in the uh, introduction part of the talk. Um, so the really important thing for you know, a bench scientist is to uh, understand you know, the different um, sample objects that we are be going to be using and, and how to um, manage those. And so uh, most people think of a database. And so uh, Benchling supports you there via it's the registry. Uh, but you can basically think of this as a database. So let's go there now. So what we're looking at on the left-hand side are all of the different um, modeled um, uh, uh, sample types. So again, as we talked about in the beginning, we really do want to fit to your science and, and not have you fit your science to Benchling. So in this case, I'm modeling antibodies, animals, amino acids, uh, cell lines, et cetera. And on the right-hand side here, you can see all of the um, unique to uh, antibodies, but standardized within uh, metadata, whether they be links or dropdowns, um, text, numbers, to really um, model and capture all of the really important uh, metadata that you guys are all interested in. Uh, as a whole, though, um, you know, we really need a way to quickly find and search what we're looking for. Um, time is of the essence. So what I'm going to be doing today is um, looking for a plasmid so I can, you know, start off my um, antibody production. So again, I've, I've done it well enough to down select and I'm only looking at the plasmid um, uh, sample in, in my database. However, you know, I should be able to further down select via maybe a particular of metadata that I'm interested in. So I'll do that now um, by looking at one of the metadata fields. In this case, I'm going to be looking at a gene. Um, and we're going to be um, generating a, a, maybe an a antibody to COVID, right? Because we're really trying to help out today. So um, this is one of the uh, genes uh, uh, important for that. Um, so I finally kind of got into my you know, down selected list. And I want to you know, double click or kind of move in uh, deeper into you know this full chain assembly that I've generated here. So what you can see is, is um, because this is a plasmid, I've, I'm, I'm directly interacting or integrating with the molecular biology. So um, I can actually see the you know full chain um, uh, plasmid map and, and any DNA sequence. But as I mentioned previously, what's really important here is that we're able to capture the standardized um, metadata that I discussed. So each of these um, links will, you know, reach out to either a, an amino acid or another piece of DNA. Um, and so, you know, we have a, a standardized name, which will make sure that the database doesn't um, create any duplications. But furthermore, if I were to bring in another uh, uh, similar chain, uh, or excuse me, I should say identical um, uh, plasmid to this, even if it had a different name, Benchling will be able to, to call that out. So we're not relying on scientists, bench level scientists to, you know, manually enter, which can lead to errors or, um, you know, even, uh, you know, when they're searching, they'll be able to make sure that, you know, there's not two different plasmids uh, uh, with the same sequence, even though they have different names. Uh, on the right hand side are all of the molecular biology tools. I'm not going to go into those today, but they're there for your use. And um, the one thing I wanted to, you know, mention is, is that, you know, moving into uh, a, a particular like amino acid, we do have various different tool sets um, within the antibody numbering, uh, CDR annotation, or any liability sites, uh, you know, uh, right out of the box to help your, your team. So um, 
this is in the you know database uh, as a, a bench scientist you know uh, I, I want to understand how this sample interacts with all the other samples so as you can see underneath um, because our system is integrated we can see all of the cells that were used to uh, or this plasmid was used in um, any um, actual uh, experiments um, so we can go there now and see you know where this uh, plasmid has been used to to generate antibodies So as I mentioned, with one click, you know, now I'm, I'm within the experiment or the notebook. And what I'm looking at is sort of our, our story that we're gonna go through or, or that was gone through. So um, kind of talked a little bit about that plasma design. We are able to do that in, in bulk. Um, you know, we'll go through some protein expression and then all the way to in vivo testing. Uh, but before I move too far ahead, um, you know, within our experiment, um, you can see a couple different links. So these are, you know, again, integrated with all of uh, the different uh, sample objects that we're really interested in. And to do that, um, I'm uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of different way, uh, as we are in this interesting age of COVID, I want to reach out to my colleague, um, Virginia here. And so what I would do is at, at her or mention her, and um, this is going to send an email directly to her so that she can co-collaborate on this experiment with me. Uh, but as you can see, you can, you can mention any of the um, uh, very important objects that you require. Um, so you can see our full chain assembly directly in the notebook. We've captured some, um, uh, what do I call it? Uh, the experimental Y or unstructured data capture. So maybe we've you know, done our protein expression. We have an ELISA plate um, in here. And now we're gonna get into the structured data capture. So uh, what these tables are, are basically windows into the database. And this is important because as a bench scientist, as I mentioned previously, we don't have a lot of time. So um, what I was able to do is, you know, generate cells um, which have their own particular um, set of metadata. You can see all of the cell banks or cell lots that I've created from them, um, so forth and so on. But again, really all of that is, can be done very quickly within in the notebook. So I've, I've generated my antibody and, you know, now I'm ready to move this into, as uh, our speakers mentioned, to like a, a physical location. So uh, this table here allows you a window into the inventory um, part of Benchling. And if I were just check on this, uh, actually, let's go to the, one of the wells within the plate. Um, I can see all of my rich metadata. And if I you know, pop up a level, I can actually see my 96 well plate with all of my antibodies and the volumes that they uh, contain. So most of the time, um, the scientific work is split up between many different teams still within the bench scientist um, persona. What I want to do next is to uh, send this off for some sort of testing to capture um, some more structured information, uh, such as results. And the way that we can do that is uh, by using our request. So I can actually, um, within our notebook, reach out to the various different um, testings that I may want to do. And again, these can all be configured. So I'm gonna be doing an antibody testing. Um, <clears throat> and right here, you can see in this uh, modal that we have the sort of experimental why of what we're going to be doing. Um, you know, with drop downs, text, uh, you know, any projects we want to link to that. Um, and then all of that rich metadata, as well as the um, location information of, of the samples that were, were moving between teams. Um, so I have a, an example of this open, so let's go to that quickly. But what this does is it really allows your team to um, quickly interact. A lot of times this is done by loose meetings, emails, Excel sheets, uh, SharePoint, other programs out there, um, and it's not kind of found in all in one, one place. So this allows your, your scientists to have the confidence to, to share this information and there's no loss um, of that, uh, both from the person who's sharing it um, and asking the test to be done. Um, in this case, Eliza, uh, some binding assays and, and, and some Western blot, uh, to the person who's fulfilling it, knowing exactly where to go and um, where those samples live within the, the lab or being shipped to them. Uh, what this does is um, notice how it can be assigned to multiple people or a group. Uh, it sends, an, again, another email to them so that they can you know, take a look. And the way that that team, uh, that, uh, that bench scientist might start their day would be you know, maybe within the requests here. So um, they can see you know, a, a basically a list of everything that's going on, uh, prioritize as needed, and then sort of move forward with their, their progress. Um, I'm going to go to the actual experiment that this is being um, done in. 
So uh, let me just show you what that looks like. We uh, have antibody testing. Um, those inputs that I mentioned that came from that original request are all found at the top, which allows it to interact with eventually structured tables. So um, all of this data capture can be done you know, relatively easily and, and, and there's not a, lot, a ton of clicking. Um, in this example, I'll just you know, bring in some um, extra Western blots that I, I didn't um, capture here. And, and the final thing I wanna show you um, is how uh, Benchling can be sort of connected to you know, uh, your lab instruments. So either if that's a liquid handler, in this particular case, we're capturing data. Um, so this is a run within Benchling and this can be configured via your IT manager, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, so that there actually doesn't need to be any um, you know, clicking or movement uh, as, as we talked about you know, through the APIs, we can you know, directly transfer this um, information in. In this example, I'm gonna show you how it is done manually just so it's easy for you guys to see, but it's, it's really just uploading a file. So I have an AB data file that is going to be um, basically just dragged in. And then once um, this is finalized, um, I would process this. But what you're seeing here, oh, excuse me, of course, it's gonna have an error today. Uh, what you would be seeing here is, is that the, um, the data would be automatically captured as you see here. Um, and uh, if there are any errors, uh, it will prompt you so that you can <laughs> reach out to your IT manager um, to see what we've done wrong. But uh, uh, within this request, um, if we go back into the request itself, the issue I think is really hard to see is, is how um, you know when things are done. And so uh, from the requester side, we can go to this fulfillment tab and see all of the um, ex uh, results that have been captured if they are there and also the notebook entry or the experiment that this has been captured in. So you no longer have to wait and ping someone, you know, via Slack or something like that to ask, hey, you know, has this been completed? Because if it is here, it will show up um, automatically. And that is also true for the person fulfilling this. Um, you don't have to send up that extra follow-up email and let them know, hey, you know, everything has been completed. Okay, so all of the structured data, um, as I mentioned, if we were to, you know, go into one of these, uh, this is an antibody in this case, is all going to be co uh, collated into one place uh, in a result. So even if someone like an R&D leader, um, in this case, our director of R&D, didn't know anything about this antibody except that this might be an important target or an important um, therapeutic one, uh, they can go into the um, registry, see all of the important metadata and results that are captured against it. But what's really needed is kind of a way to see a graphical representation of this, a summary, um, a so what. And so what we're able to do is, is perform that in the insights. So first I'd like to take us to the antibody um, uh, data uh, insights so we can kind of see like a full representation of what's going on. In this example, um, we're testing various different antibodies and um, you can see here that I have some that are yielding uh, a little bit less than the rest of these. And so maybe I want to understand um, what's going on there and why. Um, so in my summary, I can actually kind of see that maybe there's a cell bank that's causing an issue with expression. And um, if I correlate that, it's possible that, you know, antibody two and four, um, those are, are uh, a, a cell bank uh, 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 two that's causing that issue. So maybe I may not want to move forward with that or reproduce those results. And furthermore, you know, maybe any animal studies that are also um, uh, performed here, I can see that all in one place. So if I were to, you know, maybe want to look at a single cell bank, um, let's see, I think it's cell bank four is the one I'm interested in. I can now uh, update these um, to see, you know, the uh, uh, related information to which uh, antibodies were produced and, and the animal studies that were associated with those um, um, antibodies. So, this provides that sort of scientific, um, uh, so what, which is important for your bench level scientists as well as your R&D leaders. But furthermore, um, we may want to look at how the sort of process of things that are happening within the lab. And um, what I'd like to uh, leave us with is, you know, um, this is an example of uh, the requests as I've shown you. So we may wanna see all of the requests that are coming in, who owns them, um, what state they're in as well as any of the um, you know, number of these QC requests by stage and, and how quickly they're getting done. So giving you a sense of uh, how the um, throughput could, could be uh, uh, completed. 
And then I have just a, a, a uh, one minute left, I, I want to, to show how easy it is to for our IT managers to configure the system. I mean, everything you've seen here has been configured by some sort of IT uh, manager. Um, you know, we will be able to, uh, if, if there needs to be a change within the, um, let's say, the antibody here, and we want to add another piece of metadata as our, our company or our, our, our group is growing, um, we can easily and quickly do that. Um, and this is, again, for the IT managers, not for everyone in the room. But um, you know, just to show you how quickly and easy it is. So this is a, in our, our back end, uh, our point and click configurable. So I can go to the antibody. I can um, add a you know, publishable field. And maybe I want this to be a drop down or you know, a text or whatever. I'm going to just make this a Boolean um, drop down, yes or no. Once I update that and I go back into our system, all of the antibodies now have that publishable uh, metadata field where I can now um, you know, make sure that we're now capturing that kind of data. Great. So uh, just to summarize, um, we hope you got a taste of uh, how your, your unique you know, uh, research and technical uh, uh, to you is how, how Benchley can support that um, via the complex science, providing insights into how to improve your data capture and, and other processes, and provide an easy way to set up your system um, you know, we have a, a great a customer experience team um, that helps. And, and I just want to talk about one statistic here. We've done over 60 plus virtual rollouts, you know, in the last three months. Um, so we're really, uh, you know, experienced in how to help, um, you know, get your benchling if, if you do to choose to move forward uh, up and running. And um, I'll end here with, uh, you know, for new users, please reach out to request a, a follow-up. Um, for current users, you know, reach out to your IT internal uh, managers. Um, and then if, if you need more help, please reach out to Benchling Customer Experience for further support.